atin pong pag-celebrate ng Lord's Supper. Kaya sa umagang ito, atin pong uh, bigyan ng pagkakataon na atin pong uh, ipagdiwang ang pag-alaala sa banal na hapunan. Tayong lahat ay magsitayo at uh, tayo ho ay magkaroon ng uh, tahimik na pansariling panalangin bilang paghahanda upang tayo ay maging uh, karapat dapat tayo ay uh, maging uh, wasto ang lahat ng sagayon atin pong maitaguyod ang pag-alaala ng banal na hapunan na may kabanalan at uh, maging daluyan ng pagpapala ng Panginoon ang selebrasyon ito. Diyos naming dakila at banal. Sa umagang ito, kami ay narito sa iyong harapan. Dala ang aming sarili na may intensyong magpupuri at sambahin kayo sa Espiritu at sa Katotohanan. Kalakip ng aming pagparito sa iyong bahay-sambahan ay luwalhatiin kayo sa pamamagitan ng mga awitin, panalangin, pagkakaloob, at fellowship ng bawat isa sa amin bilang inyong mga anak. At sa umagang ito, Panginoon, natatangi ang araw na ito sapagkat sa pamamagitan ng araw na ito, Panginoon, ay amin hong maalaala at aming ipagdiwang ang banal na hapunan. Naniniwala kami na ang gawain ito ay isa sa mga ordinansa na iyo pong ibinigay sa iyong mga alagad at ganun din sa amin bilang isang iglesia. Sa aming pagdako, Panginoon, nalangin namin na sa aming pakikiisa sa gawain ito ngayong umaga, naway maging matimyas, Panginoon, ang aming mga puso, talisay, anumang mga bagay na maaring na mamagitan sa amin at saka sa inyo. O mga bagay, O Diyos, na hahad lang sa mapagpalang buhay. Kayo po, Panginoon, ang patuloy na maglinis sa amin sa lahat ng mga kasalanan. Maging ito man, Panginoon, ay sa aming isip, ito man sa aming mga gawa, o ito man, Panginoon, ay sa aming mga sinasabi. O Diyos, kalooban ninyo na ang pagdiwang namin ng banal na hapunan ay sagad, Panginoon, ng kabanalan. Malinaw na iyo po, Panginoong, in-instruct sa mga mananampalataya sa Korinto nung sila, ang iglesia ay nasa uh, panganib na kaila, Panginoong, na ipagdiwang ang banal na hapunan sa hindi wastong kapamaraanan. Ang ilan ay nga katulog, ang ilan ay mga nagkasakit, Panginoon. Because you wanted it to be pure, Nais ninyo, Panginoon, nalisay ang aming pagdiwang ng banal na hapunan. 
sa pagpapatuloy, Panginoon, binabalik namin ang lahat ng ipasalamat sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Amen. Ayon sa unang Korinto, Kabanatang labing isa, talatang dalawang putatlo sa wikang danyaga. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Tayo po'y sama-samang manalangin. Kagaya Panginoon ng amin hong Uh, sinasabi at aming naintindihan mula sa mga aral ng pag-alaala sa banal na hapunan. Naway patuloy naming ituturing Panginoon ang pag-alaalang ito na magdudulot sa amin ng kagalakan, kalakasan habang kami ay nag-aantabay sa iyong muling pagpaparito. Maraming salamat sa buhay o mga buhay, Panginoon, na patuloy naniniwala sa kahalagahan ng isang buhay, Panginoon, na nilalayo ninyo sa bawat isa sa amin. At napakahusay na ang aming buhay ay mamuhay kami ayon, Panginoon, sa buhay na ayon sa Uh, iyong kaharian maging sa mundong ibabaw na ito. Maraming salamat sa kahulugan ng pag-alaala ng banal na hapon. Bless our brethren this morning, not just those who participate dito sa lugar na ito, but even to our brethren who celebrated Lord's Supper in their houses. Bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning po sa ating lahat. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to our worship service this morning. And uh, ganti po sa inyong mga tahanan ay uh, uh, welcome din po kayo sa ating uh, worship service. Let's prepare our hearts and minds as we uh, give songs to God and uh, listen to His Word. Magawitan po tayo ngayong umaga bilang uh, pasasalamat po sa ating Panginoon. You are the source of life. I can't be left behind. No one else will do. I will take hold of you. Need you, Jesus, to come.
come to my rescue where else can i go there's no other name by which i am saved capture me with grace i will follow You are the source. You are the source of life. I can't be left behind. No one else will do. I will take hold of you because I need you, Jesus. Come to my rescue, tell me where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace, cause I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace, I will follow you. I will follow you. will follow you this world has nothing for me i will follow you this world has nothing for me i will follow you this world has nothing for me i'm gonna follow you this world has nothing for me I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace, because I need you, Jesus come to my rescue tell me where else can i go there's no other name by which i am saved capture me with grace capture For the glory. Tunay na siya lang po yung rescue po natin.
worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Say, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker. Miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are He, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are He, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here turning lives around, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here mending every heart, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you 
darkness my God that is who you are say it one more time you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are to God be the glory Yes, O oh God, you are in our midst this morning. That's why we worship you. The whole congreg congregation is worshiping you, O oh God. Thank you po sa umagang ito at ating pinupurihan ng ating Panginoon. Inihiling ko po ang bawat isa na tayo po ay magkaroon ng sariling pananalangin at ating pong idalangin ang gawain sa umagang ito. Ituro mo sa akin, O Panginoon, ang daan ng iyong malapalatuntunan at aking iingatan hanggang sa wakas. Bigyan mo ako ng pagkaunawa at aking iingatan ang iyong kautusan. Oo, aking susundin ng aking buong puso. Payaunin mo ako sa landas ng iyong mga utos sapagat siya kong kinaaliwan. Ikiling mo ang aking puso sa iyong mga patutuo at huwag sa kasakiman. Alisin mo ang aking mga mata sa pagtingin ng walang kabuluhan at buhayin mo ako sa iyong mga daan. Purihin ang pagkabasa ng salita ng Panginoon. Tayo po ay manalangin. O God in heaven, ang manlilikha ng buong sanglibutan. Sa lahat ng oras, ikaw po ay gumagawa sa sanglibutan ito, Panginoon. Ang mga pangyayari, Panginoon, sa bang aming bansa at sa buong sanglibutan, Ama, ay alam mo at ito'y naaayon sa iyong palatuntun. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa iyo sa umagang ito. Salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong patuloy na bibigay ng mga biyaya sa iyong mga anak sa iglesyang ito. Ang patuloy mong pagmamahal at pag-aaruga sa aming iglesya, Panginoon, 
ay aming pagpapasalamat sa iyo. O Diyos na dakila sa lahat, salamat po sa iyong pagpapala mula sa aming mga pastor at ang miyembro ng iglesia ng ito, Panginoon. Nariyan ka sa lahat ng sandali at kailanman, Panginoon, ay hindi mo kami pinababayaan. Sa aming pagkukulang ay iyong pinupunan lahat ng ito, Panginoon, dahil kami ay mahal mo. Ikaw ay gumagawa, hindi namin nakikita, ngunit ito'y aming nararamdaman, Panginoon, ang iyong walang hanggang pagmamahal at pag-aaruga sa amin. Andalangin ko sa iyo, Ama, gamitin mong iyong anak na gagamitin mo at magsasalita sa iyong pulpito. Dalangin ko sa iyo, Panginoon, na naway ang bawat tainga namin, Panginoon, ay makikinig, pakikinggan, at susundin ang naayon sa iyong kalooban. Sa bawat isa ang mga anak mong nakatayo sa kalagitnaan ng glasyong ito, at ang aming mga kapatiran, mga kaibigan, na roon sa kanilang mga sarayling tahanan, saan man silang dako sa mga oras na ito, ang dalangin ko ang iyong banal na espiritu ang siyang maghipo, sa kanilang puso, sa kanilang kaisipan, na alalahanin nila ang lahat ng bagay sa sanglibutan ay naaayon sa iyong kalaban. Salamat po, Panginoon, patuloy mo kaming maging matapat sa iyo at huwag kaming lalayo sa iyo. Dahil ang sabi mo, Panginoon, ang hiwalay sa iyo ay walang magagawa. Kaya man dakila sa lahat sa umagang ito, dalangin namin, Panginoon, ang patuloy na gawain mo sa umagang ito, ang maaming patuloy na pag-aawitan at pupupuri sa iyong dakilang pangalan. Ibinabalik namin ang lahat ng ito sa matamis na pangalan ng aming Panginoong Yesus. Amen and Amen. Tayo po ay makapo ng lahat. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Magandang umaga po. Morning. Tayo po ay nasa unang linggo ng ikatlong buwan ng taon po na ito. Tunay nga ang Diyos ay tapat sa bawat isa sa atin dahil tayo ay nasa ikatlong buwan na ng taon na ito. At sa pagpapatuloy ng ating pananambahan sa umaga po na ito, tayo po ay umawit ng Him sa ating Panginoon. Uh, sa kabila ng mga pagsubok na ating dinadanas, uh, reminder para sa atin na ang Diyos ang ating Uh, tahanan ang ating shelter in times of storm. Katahin natin ang a shelter in the time of storm. Katahin natin ang lahat ng stanza. Ready?
salamat sa masiglang pag-aawitan at sa mensahe ng awitin na ating kinanta. Ngayon, ihanda natin na ating puso at isipan sa pakikinig po ng salita ng Panginoon na dadalin po ng ating pastor. Good morning. Thank you for the songs that uh, really inspiring. Jesus is the rock on uh, weary land. So there is no other safe, there is no other secure place that every one of us must stand. That is the rock, which is Jesus. Countless of storms that comes into our lives. But these storms, it's nothing to say if we're standing strong on Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. Praise the Lord for this wonderful opportunity this morning that we can honor the Lord by our worship service this morning. I know that your heart filled with gratitude, filled with prayer, and assurance that God will bless you this morning. Praise word. Amen. If you have your Bible with you, may request to open it to the book of Jude. You might be thinking, why we will be talking about uh, the book of Jude? I am thinking, God is leading me to introduce to you this wonderful book. Okay. Essential, <coughs> necessary, marvelous, and uh, uplifting in this season of life. If you have your Bible with you, may request to open it to the book of Jude. There is no chapter, there is only chapter 1. Book of Jude is chapter 1 and there is no other chapter. Okay? So, we will be, we will be uh, concentrating or focus our attention to verse 3 and verse 4. Okay? So, I'll be reading to you from the English version. It says, Beloved, while I was making every effort to write you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you, appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for this condemnation, and godly persons who turned the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Tayo po'y manalangin. God, we thank you for this opportunity, opportunity that we can honor you, opportunity that we will lift up your word this morning. We ask the Holy Spirit to illumine each of us, to enlighten, to speak to us this morning. Those who are here in this place and those who are watching us sa kailang mga tahanan at kung man saan man sila sa oras na ito. Pagpalain ho ang aming pananambahan sa umagang ito. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jude is one of the interesting uh, uh, this is one of the most interesting introduction to the epistle. Why? Because Jude, okay, do you know Jude? Jude is a half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, Jude here ay nagsasabi sa atin ng isang intention sa kanyang sulat. Okay? Batay dyan sa pas passage na mayroon ho tayo, okay? malinaw na si Jude dito o uh, si Judas this is not, we are not referring to Judas Iscariot, we are, we are referring to Jude, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Because during that time, ang mga pangalang ito is common, okay? So sa mga katwid, may panapanahon din na nagiging uh, tanyag ang isang pangalan, okay? So during that time, ang pangalang Jude is very common. So, but in this passage, in this book, 
we are not referring to Judas Iscariot, but we are talking about Jude, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, sa puntong ito, uh, nagsasabi siya sa atin patungkol sa kanyang isang intention. So nang isinulat niya itong uh, liham na ito, ang actual na nais niya ay uh, nang kanyang isinulat has something to do that he had intended. Ano ba itong intend- intention na kanyang isinulat dito? Jude wanted to write about our common salvation. Okay. Yan yung makikita nyo dyan. Paul's in, uh, uh, Jude's intention in his, in, his, in his epistle has to do with our common salvation. So, dito po, uh, yun talaga ang kanyang, ang kanyang layunin. Okay. Ang tanging pakay na makikita po natin dito, unang, unang intention natin makikita is he, is, he, he was writing, okay, about our common salvation. So, uh, but later on, okay, he felt that it is necessary okay, to write about contending for the faith. So, sa mga katawid, biglang nag-twist yung kanyang uh, sulat dito. Pero ang kanyang nais is to write about the celebration of joy, about salvation, okay? And, uh, bakit nag-twist yung kanyang isip? Sapagkat uh, mula sa kanyang intention to, to write about common salvation, about the celebration of our salvation, he heard about information, he heard about report, uh, uh, not only report, but it is uh, the latest trend at that time na makikita natin, especially sa mga mananampalataya. At na-realize niya na ang tanging kaligtasan at pananampalataya na nais niyang isilibrate sa kanyang liham ay yaon ding maikita natin na pananampalataya na kung saan, kung hindi maingat ang mga mananampalataya, it was being severely compromised. So, sa makatawid, okay? maliban na lamang ang iglesia ay tumayo sa okasyon at ipaglaban ang pananampalataya for its survival. Now, sa puntong ito, sa pasimula ng kanyang sulat, may kita natin yung isip dito ni Jod, it's about encouraging, it's about friendly reminder, it's about comforting leaders, but it's all in up to call to arms. Okay? So, kung titingnan natin, it's about a war cry of every believer to join the truth war. So, taking their side with the Lord. Sa likod ng liham na ito, there's a bit of insight in verse 4. Ano po po makikita natin? Certain person have crept in. Okay? Kung titingnan natin, uh, the, church, the churches at that time, makikita natin that there are people who infiltrate in the church, who turn the grace into licentiousness or deny our only Master and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, dito, we do not know specifically kung sino itong mga taong ito. We don't know kung saan sila nanggagaling at uh, how, how the information, uh, the report, the trends reaches to Jude. But here, Jude alerted the believers about, about contending earnestly for the faith. So, sa puntong ito, okay, uh, isang bagay na nangingibabaw, okay, what we will be talking about this morning is about the problem or the grave danger of apostasy. Okay, what do I mean? What does I mean? Ang ibig sabihin dito ay yung matinding panganib ng pagtalikod. I entitled God's message this morning. Ah, uh, Manindigang ganap para sa pananampalataya. Why? Because just like at uh, the time of John, it started with friendly, it, stand, it, it, stra- it started with comfort, it's, it, it's, it started with, with encouraging world leaders, but it ends up to call to arms. Now, you know what? Why, I, uh, why the Holy Spirit lead us to talk about this? wonderful 
topic this morning. Because if you notice, yung ating pananampalataya, yung ating kaligtasan, it's a stake sa kadahilanan na hindi lamang uh, there is somebody who creep in in the church, okay? But if you look at the situation, this is another form of attack. You know the pandemic? It's another form of attack sa ating buhay bilang mga mananampalataya. And you know, maraming mga mananampalataya sa pangkasulukoyan, if you observe as I have observed, that their faith has been tested with this pandemic. And if they are not careful, just like what Jude told to the believers of his time, that their faith is in grave danger of apostasy. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng apostasy? Back on our passage. Okay? Uh, apostasy. Okay? So, the grave danger of apostasy is knowing the truth to some degree and abandoning it. Knowing the truth and rejecting it. Okay? So, tandaan natin na itong problema na ito ay hindi lamang ito bago kay Jude. Okay? Maraming sulat na makikita natin na naka-indicate yung problema ng pananampalataya about apostasy. Okay? But only Jude who wrote a letter that is completely devoted to fight apostasy. Now, if you are a student of the scripture, okay, apostasy is not uh, apostasy is familiar to any student of God's word. In fact, there is a parable that Jesus gave in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, or the parallel is the book of Luke, chapter 8, or even in the book of Acts. Uh, book of Mark. In Luke chapter 8, verse 12 down to verse 15, we are all aware and familiar with this parable. Okay? How do you call this parable? The parable of a good soil. Tama ba? At dito ho, para maintindihan natin, ano bang ibig sabihin ng apostasy? Ano bang ibig sabihin ng pagtalikot? Ibibigay sa atin ang larawan dito ho sa passage sa mayroon ho tayo. Okay? Kung papansinin ninyo, uh, may kita natin that um, in verse 11, told us that the word of God is the seed. Okay? So, ang, ang salita ng Panginoon ay yung butil. Okay? And then the soil is our heart. Na sa puntong ito, makikita natin that in that passage, okay, there are different places where the seed was scattered. Tama? In verse 12, those, there are seed that was scattered along the path. Second, there are seed that are scattered on the rock and there are seeds that fill among the thorns, okay? And later on, I will explain to you the last one, okay? Those that were, that was scattered on a good soil. But first and foremost, dito muna tayo sa tatlong ito, okay? Papansinin natin mabuti na mayroon pong mga, mga tinatawag nating uh, pangyayari na naganap dito. So kung papansinin nyo, those beside the road or path are those who have heard and what happened? Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart so that they may not believe and say. Those that were scattered uh, on the rocky ground, okay, or rocky soil, sino naman sila? Uh, are those who, when they heard, received the word with joy. Okay? And this have no firm root they believed for a while and in time of temptation, what happened? Fall away. What we're talking about? Apostasy. Apostasy is falling away. Okay? Pagtalikod. Okay? Now, and there are words, and the word fell among the thorns, and these are those who have, and, and, and these are the ones who have heard, and as they go on their way, they choke 
with worries and riches and pleasure of this life and bring no fruit to maturity. And then he goes and talk about a good soil where he said, where the seed goes in and bear fruit. So, kung papansin ninyo, mula sa uh, parable na yan, okay, tatlong uh, kaso na makikita natin kung saan ang mga tao ay nakarinig ng salita ng Diyos at sila ay tumalikod. Okay? And this is essentially na makikita natin the word apostasy is all about. Okay? It is hearing the truth, it is knowing the truth, and later on, rejecting the truth. Okay? Pinakinggan mo, tinanggap mo, pero pagdating sa dulo, tinalikuran mo. Okay? That is essential of the word apostasy. It is exactly what Jude was writing about. Or is writing about. Okay? Yung mga mananampalataya sa kanyang kapanahonan ay nasa matinding panganib o yung ang iglesia ay nasa matanding panganib kung wala silang gagawin na pakikibaka sa kailang buhay pa na ng palataya. Okay? Yan yung makikita natin. So kung titingnan natin mabuti, no? these people are in great in a greatest danger to the church because they know something about the gospel and they bring and uh, bring to bear against the church certain subtleties by their defection. Okay? Kaya nais ko pong i-define natin. What is apostasy? Apostasy is the one who received the truth of the gospel, maybe even one who believes it. Okay? Apparently or superficially for a time, but, but then turns away, falls away, goes away without bearing fruit. Okay? Uh, uh, yan yung makikita natin. I think there's a, there is a PowerPoint uh, dito sa definition na ito. Okay? So, an apostate is the one who received the truth of the gospel, maybe even uh, even uh, uh, one who believes it apparently or superficially for a time, but then turns away, then falls away, goes away without bearing fruit. Nakikita ninyo yung definition na yan? Alam nyo ho, para mas lalo nating maintindihan, ito po yung ginamit sa aklat ho ng Hebrews chapter 6. Okay? If you have your Bible again, Hebrews chapter 6 verse, beginning verse 4. Okay? If you look at this passage, makikita po natin, sabi doon, For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, okay? who have tasted the heavenly gifts and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the Word of God, and the powers of the age to come, and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding Him up to contempt. Now, nais ko lang pong ipaliwanag sa inyo. Ano bang ibig sabihin dito? Now, isa po sa malinaw na kamalayan na makikita natin, ito ho yung kaso ng mga sinasabing, nagsasabing mananampalataya who has been enlightened. Okay? They've come to know, they come to understand and to know the facts about the gospel. Ang sabi dito sa ating tala, they have tested. Okay? They have tested the heavenly gift. Okay? They have some test of the great power of God manifest in Christ. Okay? At sabi doon, they have even made partakers of the Holy Spirit. Okay? That is to say, the work of the Holy Spirit through Christ, they may sin, or they have sin. Okay? And many of them, of course, in the time of Christ was on earth, and they had a personal, first-hand experience of that power. But I would like to tell you, these people only tasted the power of God. Okay? It's all about tasting. It's not about eating. Okay? Natikman lang nila, pero hindi nila kinain. Okay? They tasted the power of the age to come. The kingdom power was released through Jesus. Nakita niya, naranasan nila yung lahat ng miracles. They were, uh, uh, they were actually uh, tasted. Okay? Uh, that miracle, and they have a purpose of the kingdom. 
So kung papansinin natin, okay, ito po, ito yung mga taong ito, uh, uh, here, uh, dito sa mga, sa, sa, sa puntong ito, makikita natin itong mga tinutukoy dito ay nakakarinig ng minsay, naintindihan ng minsay sa isip nila, and who got test of the heavenly power of Christ, who experienced the wonders working the Spirit of God through them, who tested, okay, uh, the good word of God that came out of His mouth, who saw the miracle of powers that characterized the age to come. But what happened? In verse 6, anong sabi dyan? Sabi niya, and then have fallen away. Yan ang mga kapatid sa panang palataya. Okay? Napakabigat ang ganitong karanasan. Okay? Napakabigat uh, na tanggapin na kinakabahan tayo minsan, baka ito'y nangungusap sa atin. Di ba? Imagine nyo, okay? lahat na lang natikman nila. Okay? They have tested, but later on, what happened? They fall away. Sila'y tumalikod. Okay? Now, mga kapatid, okay? kung papansin din natin, sabi dito sa ating talata, then they have fallen away, and next, Okay? Uh, falling away to restore them again to repentance. Okay? So it's, it's impossible. Walang nakalagay dito. Eh. It's impossible to restore them again to repentance since they were crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding Him up to contempt. Okay? Na pakabigat na sitwasyon ito. Okay. It is impossible to renew them again to repentance since they crucified themselves the Son of God and put Him to shame. Now, if having all that information, they turn and go to other direction. Sabi ni Jude dito, it is impossible to be saved because they rejected when they had full light. Apostasy is to hear and understand, at least maybe apparently believe, okay? but turn away and turn and defect. Now, I want to go back for a minute to the book of Luke. Okay? And I just want to compare the word receive. Okay? Luke chapter 8. And I want you to concentrate on verse 13. Okay? Uh, do you know that the, the specific persons that was repairing here as those Christians, okay? The seed was scattered on a rocky soil, okay? Those, they, they hear the word, listen, they hear the word, and what's next? What they do? They receive the word, okay? Uh, but this have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of this thing, what happened? Fall away. Now, let me emphasize the word receive. Okay? So, receive. Tinanggap nila. Okay? And in original, eh, sorry, but I want to show you what is the original uh, appearance of the word receive in the Greek. That is the word dikontai. Okay? Meaning, to take, to take with the hand. Okay? Tinanggap nila. Okay? Tinanggap nila. And I want to cross-refer it, the same parable, okay? In Mark chapter 4, verse 20, okay, he's speaking to the good soil. Okay? Good soil, sabi niyan, but those who were sown in a good soil are the ones who hear the word and what? Accept it. What is the difference between receive and accept? Okay? And bear fruit, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Okay? Now, the original word, okay, let me emphasize again, sorry for this, din yung maintindihan yan, but I have to emphasize to you, what does it mean? The word paradikontai. So yung una, di kontay. Dito, para di kontay. Ano bang ibig sabihin dito? To admit, not to reject, to accept, to receive. Okay? Now, okay? ito po yung solusyon nating makikita dito. If we will compare the word accept, or receive, receive, the same word, in the same parable. The one, the one, the good soil, receive it, admit it, not to reject. Okay? So sa mga katid, yung isa, tinanggap din niya by the hand, but he, he received it with joy, but later on, he fell away. Did not bear fruit. The other one received it and bear much fruit. Do you remember that? Okay, now, sa puntong ito, 
ito yung kagandahan. Okay? Dahil ganito yon. Hindi nyo maintindihan yan sa unang tingin lang. Pero maintindihan nyo yan pagdating sa kung paano nila tinanggap. Okay? Yung isa, tumanggap ng papaimbabaw lamang, pero itong pangalawang term na ginagamit natin dito, the word paradikontay, it has intensity of accepting. Yung, yung lubos na pagtanggap, yung totoong pagtanggap, hindi na pagpaimbabaw na pagtanggap. Kaya makita ninyo, why the other one who receive it with joy, when the things, ano, ano yung dumating, uh, nawala yung kanyang, ano, nawala yung kanyang kagalakan, what happened? Fall away. But the other one who receive it in, 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 with intensity, what happened? He receive it and bear fruit. Gano'ng kadami bunga niya? 30-fold and 60-fold and 100-fold. Now, this is what, what I am talking about apostasy. Okay? Dikumai is a word received, used by Luke, referring that to those that fall away. Okay? Para dikumai, the good soil does more than a sort of superficial reception because para dikumai is an intensified word. A stronger term indicating a deep reception. Okay? Yan yung makikita natin. Para di kumay as much deeper heart acceptance on the part of the good soil. Kaya, kung titignan natin dito, he was not being influenced by any circumstances around. Because he think that the word of God take root. Okay? Pero nung tumanggap, the good soil received that way. But the rocky soil, sa kanyang pagtanggap, it's superficial. Okay? Yan yung ibig sabihin dito. Okay? Yan yung malinaw na papaliwanag ng term na acceptance. Okay? Those who apostatize may hear the truth, may understand the truth, but they never produce fruit because they never have any root. Okay? Sabi ni Joe dito, if you drop down to verse 12, look at verse 12. Sabi doon, they are without fruit. Okay? Doubly did and uprooted. Okay? At dito ho, si Jude ho ay nagtatatag siya ng lingwahe of this parable from Matthew, from Mark, and from Luke. Ang sabi ni Jude, they are fruitless. Okay? They were dead. They were rootless. Okay? Ganon katindi yung kanyang, kanyang idea dito. Jod is not creating his own um, uh, thinking without basing that idea to the gospel. Okay? So the word fruit, the word rooted, it was, it was refer, referred to the parable. Okay? So dito may kita yung hiwaga ng salita ng Panginoon that even from the gospel to down to the last book of the revelation there is there was no contradiction you will um, you will be amazed okay the miracle of the word of god that each of them supports each other you know mga kapatid sa paanang palataya speaking to this okay talking about apostasy okay we are not uh, we are not confusing our mind okay na pagsabihin nating apostasy okay we are It, it uh, apostate, we are not talking about those people who are indifferent from the word. We are not talking about people who are ignorant to the word. Okay? We are not talking about people who never heard the truth. Okay? Dito ho natin may ikita. Apostate are those people who are, who are, ano, who receive, accept, okay? Yet, what happened? They fall away sila ito malikod. Okay? Yan ang mga kapatid sa panang palataya. Uh, these people, this apostate, these people who receive the light but not the life. These people receive the seed but not the fruit. These people perhaps okay, receive the written word but not the living word. Okay? 
Why? Because they have a willful, deliberate rejection of the truth after the truth has been shared to them. Yan mga kapatid. I want to make an illustration. Okay? I, 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 the first illustration I was in parable is I'm not, I'm not, you, there is no specific person. Okay? But for you to know that in the Bible, there's a specific person that I want to tell you, I want to share to you, who is apostate. That the definition, okay, that we have, okay, really, really visible, the life of that man. Acts chapter 8, okay. If you have your Bible in Acts chapter 8, uh, I will introduce to you, <coughs> A man named Simon. Okay? How was Simon introduced in verse 9? Sabi dyan, But there was a man named Simon. So listen carefully. The same name, Peter. Tama ba? Oh, Simon Peter. Because that's common name. But we're referring to other... We're not referring to Simon. Okay? We're referring to this Simon who is magician. Okay? There was a man named Simon, okay, who had previously practiced magic. Okay. Sino sa inyo dito ang marunong mag-magic? Okay. You know what is magic is all about, right? Okay. Magic, magic. Okay. Sa palingki, maraming magic. Okay. Marami kung saan-saan, maraming magic. Okay. Okay. Who had previously pra practiced magic in the city? And you know what? Uh, and amazed the people of Samaria, okay, saying that he himself was so uh, ano bang tawag dyan? was uh, so uh, was so somebody great okay? uh, was somebody great okay? was somebody great ihiwalay mo yung ano dyan uh, may body okay? somebody great so ang turing sa kanya ng mga taga Samaria ay talagang dakila okay? dahil magician siya eh at uh, you know, talagang pag itong taong ito ay talagang nagmamagic, okay? They all paid attention. Talagang mapatunganga ka. Talagang titingin ka sa kanya, okay? Uh, from the least to the greatest saying, this man, sabi nila, referring to Simon, this man is the power of God that is called great. So, we are talking about a great man. Okay. So it so happened that Philip, okay, is a faithful proclaimer of the gospel. Philip was serious about preaching the gospel. Philip was uh, preaching the gospel of the Lord one place to another. And this is one of the characteristics of the apostles of Jesus. They never stop. Never stop working. Okay to proclaim the good news of Jesus. And it so happened, Philip reached Samaria. What's the next? Okay, verse 12. Philip preached the good news about the kingdom of God. And the name of Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip, and seeing signs and great miracles performed, and he was amazed. Do you know what I am talking about? Meaning to say, Simon Peter, I know, P, uh, Simon, sorry, not Peter, Simon, referring to that person, he knew the truth about the word of God. He was being baptized. And not only that, kasi minsan totoo yun. I am a victim of that. And many times I experienced that after I baptized people, I cannot find them anymore in the church. But look at Simon. Simon Simon did not stop after being baptized. Why? Sabi niyan, he continued with Philip. Simon was walking with Philip, ministering with Philip. And not only that, he enjoyed seeing the signs and great miracles performed. And you know what? He was amazed. Okay? 
Yan yung idea na makikita natin. He was himself believed. Okay? Gano'n ba katindi yung kanyang, kanyang pananampalataya dito? Gano'n ba katindi yung faith niya dito? Yung belief niya dito? Sabi niya, uh, how strong is that faith? Okay? Kung titingnan natin sa unang appearance, he was being baptized. And after being baptized, he continued with Philip. Okay? And not only that, he was observing signs, great miracles taking place, and was constantly being amazed. Okay? Now, we will jump to verse 18. What happened next? In verse 18, when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the lying on the apostles, and he offered them money. He offered him. Uh, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Spirit. Okay? Pagkatapos ng lahat-lahat na yun, siya ay naniniwala, siya ay nagbautismo, nagpabautismo, siya ay sumunod, sumama kay Philip sa pangangaral, he was, um, he was witnesses of signs and miracles, but what happened next? He had a desire in his heart okay, to bribe the apostles that, they might all, that he may experience what these apostles had. Okay? What happened? Okay? And Simon saw the wondrous miracle. No, he believed and was baptized and he continued and he be observed sign and he was constantly amazed. But what is the reaction of Peter in verse 20? In verse 20, according to the word of God, sabi ni Peter dito, you may your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in the band of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. Yun ang mga kapatid sa panang palataya. It is, it is a challenge okay, that we may not fall away from the faith. Imagine, wala ka nang tulak kabigin kung titingnan mo lang yung buhay nitong taong ito. Okay? He believed, being baptized, sumama sa mission, mission work, experience the wonders, see the miracles, and constantly amazed. But what? He did not bear fruit. Right? So, he wanted to buy the miracles. He, he wanted to, to buy that gift with money. Sabi ni Peter, me, you perish with your silver. Yun ang mga kapatid. Okay? Hindi nangihinayang si Pedro doon kung anong pera mayroon siya. Hindi nangihinayang. You know, what is Peter is after the transformation of his life. What is Peter is after is the fruit of his life. But nobody, nothing visible fruit in his life. Okay? Kaya, kung papansin natin, sabi niya, you are still band of iniquity. You are in the gall of bitterness and the band of iniquity. Okay? Yun yung kanyang pagturing dito kay Simon na ito. <clears throat> Simon answered, pray that the Lord for me yourselves so that nothing of what you have said may come after me. So kung sa pangipabaw lang na makikita natin, believe, baptized, never delivered from the band of sin. Okay? So that's the day he became apostate. He became the most dangerous person to the Christian faith and the gospel. Because the rest of his life, he would say, nandoon naman ako, ginawa ko naman ito, pero hindi totoo. Okay? At hindi po. Ah... Uh, nag-work out. Yan ang mga kapatid sa panang palataya. 
You know, apostasy is not limited in the New Testament. Apostasy is not limited in the New Testament. Can I? We will try to uh, revisit the Old Testament and let's try to find out if this problem or sin or this problem of apostasy is existent even the Old Testament. And let me tell you, <clears throat> in the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 9, says, <clears throat> do not, only do not rebel against the Lord. And do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their protection is removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. But the word uh, apostasia in original, uh, in, in, in the Greek Septuagint, nandun ho yun, do not rebel against the Lord. Okay? So, yan ho. Okay? And God says, do not apostatize. Okay? Uh, yan. In, 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 in Joshua chapter 22 verse 16 also <clears throat> sabi dyan the whole congregation of the Lord what is this breach of faith that you have committed against God of Israel? The breach of faith okay, in turning away this day from following the Lord by building yourselves an altar this day in rebellion against the Lord. You have again find the idea of apostasy, turning away to malikot. They know the truth, they believe the truth, they receive the truth, then they fall away. Another one, okay, is in the book of um, Jeremiah. I'm not talking to Jeremiah yet. Okay? I'm talking to Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. Okay? You find the same thing, okay, in chapter 2, verse 19, your evil way chastise you and your what apostasy will reprove you. Okay? Know and see that it is evil and bitter. For you forsake the Lord your God, the fear of me is not in you, declares the Lord of hosts. And actually, not only once but twice in the book of Jeremiah, the same statement appeared. Chapter 5 or 6 said, Therefore, a lion from the forest shall strike them down. A wall from the desert shall devastate them. Leopard, leopard is watching their cities. Everyone who goes out of them shall be torn in pieces. Because what? Their transgressions are many. Their apostasies are great. And I think Hosea also, there is uh, in the book of uh, the book of Hosea, okay, chapter eleven, verse seven says, "My people are bent on apostatizing, okay, or my people are bent on turning away from me, okay." And so, this is something that always go on, you know. In John chapter six, verse thirty-six, okay, people who knew the truth reject the truth, even the life of Jesus. John chapter 6, verse 36, nakikita po natin, as a result of this, many of his disciples withdrew and were not walking with him anymore. Okay? Uh, may mga teaching ang ating, ating Panginoon na naging sanhi na sila po ay mag-drop. Uh, mag okay? O mag nag nalumayo. Literally, they apostatized, they vanished, and became apostate to the truth that they heard when they rejected it. Uh, uh, that they heard then they rejected it. Okay. Do you remember also the Sermon on the Mount, or we call it the Olivet Discourse of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, uh, particularly verse 9, anong sabi ng Panginoon doon? Sabi niya, uh, Then they will deliver you to tribulation, they will kill you, you will be hated by all nations on account of my name, and at that time many will fall away. Many will become apostates. Imagine ninyo, dumating, sabi niya, uh, marami sa inyo ay humarap ng mga tribulation, marami sa inyo ang mamamatay, uh, marami sa inyo ay kamumuhian ng maraming bansa sa pangalan ko. Okay? At sa oras din na yon, marami ang nagsitalikod sa kanya. Marami ang mga uh, nagpo-fall away. You know, mga kapatid sa panampalataya, uh, this is a great reminder for all of us. In 2 Peter 
uh, verse 20 also, the same matter. Okay? Sabi niya, For if after they have escaped the defilement of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome. Okay? The last states has become worse for them at first. Sabi niya, if you know the truth, if you have come to the knowledge of the Lord and Savior in your mind and you go back, you are entangled again and defilement of the world. Okay? The last state is worse. Sabi niya, it would be better for them not to be known the way of righteousness than having known it. Why? To turn away from the holy commandment delivered to them. They are like dog returning to its own vomit or so after washing returning to wallow in the mire. So, kung papansinin natin, eh, ito ko'y isang napakabigat na kalagayan na kung hindi natin babantayan, mga nganib, ang buhay, pananampalataya ng bawat isa. You know, in the New Testament, eh, do you remember, eh, uh, you cannot uh, the word apostasy, okay, you, you, you cannot find uh, in the Bible that the Bible commending the language to bestow upon apostasy. Hindi maganda ang palaging lingwahin ng Biblia laban sa tinatawag natin pagtalikod. Okay? Uh, they, are, uh, they are going actually, everywhere in the New Testament you will find that, but the language of the Bible is very strong okay, against apostasy. Example, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, okay, beginning verse 1, okay, the Spirit explicitly says that in later times, some will fall away from faith. Okay? Fall away from it. There's the, the same term. Okay? They will defect. In other words, according to Paul, uh, saying to Timothy, they will make shipwreck of their faith. Okay? The same in chapter 1 verse 9. Okay? Their faith will come to an end like a plane crash. Okay, ganun katindi yung lingwahe dito. Again, also in 2 Timothy, you will find the same thing in chapter 4, uh, in chapter uh, 4, verse 4. Okay? This is the day, this is going to come. Okay? Paul referring to the they will come, they will not endure sound doctrine. And what happened? They will turn away their urge from the truth, turn aside to myths. Okay? So, you know, apostasy is present. Okay? Apostasy is present to every churches. Therefore, according to Acts chapter 20, verse 28, sabi ni, 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 ni Locke, okay, si Locke po ang sumulat, sabi niya, be on guard for yourselves and all the flock. Okay? You've got to be on guard. Why? Because after my departure, savage wolf will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Okay? And here's the danger. From among your own selves, men will rise, speaking for bursting, draw away the disciple after them. You know, that's how, uh, that, 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 that is how uh, dangerous. Okay? Kaya sabi niya, therefore be on alert, remembering that night and day, for a period of three years, I did insist to admonish each one with theirs. Who are going to deal with it. Kaya sabi ni Paul, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace which is able to build you up. The only way that you are going to be able to defend yourselves against uh, this is to know the word so well that you can recognize the apostasy. Yan mga kapatid, what happened to the, what happened to the generation of Noah? Maalala ninyo, Anong nangyari sa generasyon ni Noah? Noah, uh, 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 the generation of Noah heard the truth and rejected it. You know, how, how long Noah built the ark? 100 years, may get. And every time he built the, the ark, he is preaching the gospel. He is preaching about salvation. But these people doesn't listen. They know the truth, they receive the truth, and then turn away. Okay? What happened? They heard the truth, they rejected it, walk away from it, and what happened? They all drawn. It was also apostasy 
from the truth that lead to the tower of Babel. Okay? Because the true and living God had been proclaimed. Okay? It was apostasy that made Israel fail to conquer the land under Joshua and ignore the wording of Moses. It was apostasy that produces immorality at the time of Judges. It was apostasy that led Israel into Babylonian captivity and it was apostasy in the whole religion of Israel. It was apostasy and the whole religion of Israel was apostate. And that's why they didn't recognize Messiah when he came. Apostasy has plagued the church, not only in individual situation, but also in a massive way. Kaya kung titignan natin mabuti mga kapatid sa pananampalataya, it is very important okay, to take notice of ourselves before our God. Okay? Because apostasy is not only happen to individual, but it also happened in a massive way. Now we'll go back to <coughs> the book of Jude. Okay, napakalayo narating natin. But I would like to go back to the book of Jude. Again, we will read this passage again. Okay? Sabi nito, Beloved, although I was eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to, to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Okay? So, his desire, his heart, is to contend okay, the faith that was once delivered to us. Okay? Now, I want to notice the word beloved. Okay? What do we mean by beloved? Mga minamahal. Okay? You know that in the book of Jude, uh, three times the word beloved appears. You notice? In verse... Uh, there are verses na may kita natin about about uh, about this uh, in verse 17 and in uh, in verse 17 and in verse 20 the word beloved appears okay? but i would like to tell you what is important here um i want to concentrate on that word okay i want to say that this gives me a good opportunity to say the word love okay many times <clears throat> Kung ikaw ay naninindigan sa isang bagay, kung ikaw ay nagdraw ng linya where the Bible draws the line, if you do not compromise and you stand for the truth, you live for the truth, you proclaim to the truth, at uh, hindi ka sumuko, what people call you? Anong tawag sa'yo ng mga tao? Kung naninindigan ka sa Biblia, Kung, kung nanindigan ka, tinuturo mo ang katotohanan, you draw the line, uh, you draw the line where the Bible draws the line, you do not compromise, you stand for the truth, <coughs> you live for the truth, <coughs> you proclaim the truth, how people call you? They will call you unloving. Tama ba? Kung nagsasabi tayo sa katotohanan, nanindigan sa katotohanan, hindi tayo nakipagkompromiso, sa mga kompromiso nila, Ang tawag sa iyo, loving ka ba? No. People call you unloving. Subukan ninyo. Alam ko, alam mo maraming basis na natin yan na naranasan eh. You stand for what the Bible says and people would say, <coughs> wala namang kalablab to. These are unloving people. Totoo ba yan? Hindi. Nangyayari na ba sa buhay ninyo? Or you do not stand for the truth? Or you do not draw the line where the Bible draws the line. Therefore, nobody called you unloving. Because if, if you stand for the truth, you do not compromise, you draw the line where the Bible draws the line, <coughs> people will not, will not tell you you are loving. People will tell you unloving. And that is very typical. Yan yung designation <coughs> ng mga preacher. Yan yung designation ng mga mananampalataya <coughs> na nagsasabi ng katotohanan, naninindigan sa katotohanan, draw the line where the Bible draws the line. He is not loving. Okay? 
that is common designation okay if you expose sin okay if you expose uh, uh, exposing sin of others people's life people will tell you you are unloving so therefore you do not you do not expose so that pe people will call you loving you know yan lang naman yan eh if you want to if, if, if you want people call you loving do not stand for the bible do not stand for the truth and people tell you you are loving you know i would like to tell you okay here okay jude is not seeing here that he does not love paul loves the people Okay, I, Jude loved the people. He cares so much for the people. Kaya nga, he cares, uh, he, he, he write to them, okay, about common salvation, okay. But the love, but he loves his people too much to leave them exposed to what he saw, a great treat. Kaya sabi niya, beloved, he says, okay. In verse 17, beloved. In verse 19, beloved, okay. You know, this love is not a kind of sentimentalism. Yung love na ito. You know, mga kapatid sa pahanang palataya, this is not the kind of love, shallow emotion. Okay? Uh, this is not kind of love, uh, some kind of tolerance. Okay? Ito yung totoo, ito yung malayunin, ito yung makapangyari, uh, makapangyarihan, loving concern of a man of God para sa mga anak ng Diyos, okay? Na maiingatan sila sa anumang makakapinsala sa kanila at makakasira sa kanilang pagiging epektibo sa gawain ng Panginoon. Okay? You know, ano bang klaseng pag-ibig after ang Diyos? What kind of love do you think that God is after? Ha? Huh? Let me tell you this. Pakilagay mo nga dito. This is it. It is not love born of sentiment that God is after. It is born of conviction regarding the truth. Ang pag-ibig kung saan nais ng Panginoon is not born of sentiment. It is not born of feeling. But God is after the love that is born of conviction. Conviction regarding the truth. Kaya mga kapatid sa pananampalataya, hindi po pwede dito. Okay? Kung ang pag-ibig natin ay umiikot lang sa damdamin at sentimento. Because God is not after that kind of love. But God is after the love that is born of your conviction. kung ano yung katotohanan. Okay? So, pag sabihin natin ito, you have always draw the line. Okay? You love someone when you tell them the truth. Okay? You love someone when you tell them the truth. Okay? Kaya kung ang damdamin lang pairalin natin, Yun ang gusto ng mga tao. Sometimes, the love that is born of sentiments, we are so happy about that. But God is not, is not the same with us. God is after the truth. So therefore, He afters the love that is born out of conviction regarding the truth. So if you, if you really love someone, just like, what I, just like how I love you, I will tell you the truth. Okay? How important to take care of our lives. How important our lives today that we are in pandemic that sometimes our faith has been staked. Nakataya yung ating pananampalataya, the way we worship. Yan mga kapatid, I would like to tell you this. That sometimes when we have our pastor's fellowship, 
Uh, hindi namin makalimutan, hindi namin may isang tabi that we have to say, to, kumusta ministry mo, kumusta ang church ninyo. Sometimes, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them. Said, how about your church? Sabi, sabi sa kanila, how about your, uh, how about the, the kumusta po yung, yung spiritual life ng church ninyo? We have limited face-to-face worship service. But they are growing in number. Wow. We have limited worship service, but our people really develop the discipline of having devotion. Wow. How about your giving? This pandemic, our giving was double. Na, alam mo, sabi ko sa sarili ko, sana all. Pero hindi ba kung saan hinahamon yung ating pananampalataya, doon dapat tayo maninindigan? Hindi ba dapat? Okay? Doon tayo lalong magbunga? Hindi ba doon dapat tayo mas lalong lumakas? O doon tayo pagdating ng mga pagsubok na, na ito, dito tayo lalong humina? You know, just like what we have said, okay? sa puntong ito, those seed that was scattered on the good soil, what happened? What happened? They take root. They bear fruit. How much fruit they bear? 30, 60, 100 fold. Regardless of any circumstances, they continue to grow. You know, believers in Jesus, I submit to you this message to remind you that we will not endanger our faith. Instead, we have to make our faith blooming in the midst of this pandemic. We will grow. Dahil sinasabi ko sa inyo, malinaw na kung saan uh, the way we, we receive the word, the way we receive the faith, Circumstances is, non, is, is non-negotiable in relation to our faith. Okay. May kita ninyo yan? Okay. Those who receive, anong klaseng receipts? reception? Dekontay. That is superficial. The other one is para dekontay. That is intensified acceptance. Now if you have really intensified your acceptance of the truth, of salvation, the gospel, the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, the conviction. Okay. Everything, even the midst of pandemic, is not negotiable. Okay. Because in that area, you can grow. Because in that area, you can bear fruit. Okay. So mga kapatid, sa paan ang palataya, according to, according to, according to, to Jude chapter 3, I feel the necessity. Okay. It is by conviction of the Holy Spirit for him to speak to them regarding this warning. And I would like to tell you also that I feel the necessity to speak to you this, this morning. So and I hope that we will continue to guard our faith regardless of what is your circumstances. Okay. Bear fruit. Bear fruit. You know, I just, I, just, I just like to share to you what my experience just past two days. Last Friday, Kuya Bert and I went to the... I do not know if any of you reached that place. I went to Malaysia Uyungan. Okay. Narinig yung pangalan, pero hindi, 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 hindi nyo napuntahan yun eh. So, 
just for ano, gusto ko lang kasing mag-relax. Pero hindi relax yung nangyari. Si Kuya Bert, sumimplang, ako nasiraan. Pero ito yung kagandahan. Pauwi kami, nasira yung motor ko. Hinabol si Kuya Bert ng aso, pero yung motor ko yung nasira. So, about 15 minutes, hinaayos-ayos ko. Hindi naman ako marunong mag-ayos ng motor. So, tinitingnan ko lang. So, ginawa kong paraan, yung pababa, pinatakbo ko yung motor. So, mandar. Sabi ko, makauwi na ako. So, what happens next? After na, ano, nakaahon ako sa medyo mataas, nasira naman uli at nagkataon na may bahay. Mag-asawa. Itong mag-asawa na ito, ay mga matanda na sila, I think, nasa late, late 60s. Pero nakita ko yung buhay nilang dalawa, napakalabing nila. So, sabi nila sa akin, Sir, dito ka muna kasi mainit yan. <coughs> so, sabi ko, maraming salamat ho. So, what I, what's follow, what follows next? Naghintay ko kay Kuya Bert na talagang babalik. Pero alam ko, babalikan na ko eh. So, at that time, naayos namin yung motor. So, nagpahinga muna kami. So, it's take the opportunity to share to them the gospel. So, they were not ordinary Catholics. They were Jerusalem. You know Jerusalem? This is a common, ano yung tawag niyan? Parang grupo ito ng religious group sa mga kabundukan. That when their leader says, there is no class, huy bis walang pasok ang puray, itong mga kabataan na mimro ng ganong ano, ganon silang katindi. I preach to them, I share to them the gospel. Kuya Bert knows that. And they're actually, sabi, sabi ko, sabi uh, ko, hindi man tayo magkita susunod, pero sabi niya, makakabalik kayo dito. Okay. And yesterday, I praised the Lord. Our outreach, we baptized two souls yesterday. I told Brother John, just keep on. Just keep on. Preaching and teaching, proclaiming the truth. Yesterday, we baptized two souls. I asked them, ang pagbabaptize na ito ay hindi nakakadagsag-dagdag sa kaligtasan. Pero ang sabi ko sa kanila, once you proclaim, once you say that you follow the Lord, there's no turning back. There is no turning back. So listen carefully. I know you are all baptized. Kaya may hindi pa baptized. I hope you have the same commitment. I want, I want you to renew your commitment than when you say, you want to follow the Lord. There is no turning back. I do not want to see people who heard the truth, who received the truth, and later on, fall away. What I want and what we want, that we have to grow and bear much more. What we are going to do today, we have to guard our faith. Tayo po yung lang. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us. Thank you for reminding us how to take care of our faith. It was once delivered to the saints. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, Pastor, sa mensahe na inyo pong binigay. Reminder para sa bawat isa sa atin na dapat ay manindigan sa ating uh, pananampalataya. At upang tayo uh, makapanindigan sa ating pananampalataya, kailangan nating magtiwala at sumunod sa Kanya. Kaya bilang tungkol sa mensahe na ating napakinggan, kantahin po natin ng trust and obey. Kantahin po natin ng uh, apat na stansa at sa ikaapat na stansa hinihiling ko na kayo po ay tumayo sa ikaapat lamang po na stansa ready Bye. 
Let's pray. Thank you, O God, of your faithfulness. Salamat, Panginoon, despite ng pandemic na ito, Panginoon, ang katapatan mo sa aming buhay. Ang patuloy na pagpapalang ibinubuhos mo sa amin na hindi ka nagkukulang, O Diyos. Salamat, Panginoon. Nanaway, Panginoon, sa pandemic na ito ay patuloy naming maitayo ang iyong pangalan sa aming patutuo, sa aming kapwa. Dalangin ko sa umagang ito, Panginoon, na patuloy na iingatan mo ang iglesyang ito sa panguna ng aming pastor. Ang bawat isa, na kung may, may, mayroon man, Panginoon, may mga karamdamang physical, dalangin namin at hiling sa iyo, iyo po silang hipuin. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa patuloy na pagpapalang ipinagkulog mo sa amin. Sa lahat ng bagay nito, Panginoon, na hindi ka nagkulang sa amin, ibinibigay namin, Panginoon, ang para sa iyo. Sa matamis na pangalan ng aming Panginoong Yesus. Amen. Tayo po ay makaupo ng lahat. Sa ating announcement sa umagang ito po ay nagpapasalamat tayo sa bawat isa na narito po. And face to face we are worshiping God of heaven and earth. Enrichment for Christian Leadership, Discipleship and Mentoring Program. Third meeting this Friday, March 12, 7 p.m. via Google Meet. Ang topic po ay, Every Disciple is a Learner. Online prayer meeting, every Wednesday, 6 o'clock pa rin po ng gabi. Young Professional Sunday School and Youth Sunday, and youth Sunday School, every Sunday afternoon, 1.30 p.m. via Google Meet. Kids Sunday School, every Sunday, via, and uh, every Sunday, And also, MFBC Kids Facebook page. And to everyone who wishes to attend our physical worship service gathering every Sunday, let's don't forget to register to Pastor Aaron Andrade. Narito na po ang kanyang numero at sa doong wala pang numero. Uh, 0916 89795 I say it again 0916 Para po uh, ma-register kayo before Friday Other announcement reminders clarification will be posted in MFBC Facebook page through your group chat To God be glory tayo po ay magsita yung lahat sa ating closing prayer and benediction. We will resume also collecting our mission fund uh, beginning this month. So, tayo po ay sama-samang manalangin. O Diyos, maraming salamat po sa umagang ito. Maraming salamat sa makabuluhang minsahe na iyo pong ipinagkaloob sa bawat uh, sa amin. It might be touching, it might be hurting, but we know that the Holy Spirit intended it, Panginoon, that we might listen and find that message this morning, Panginoon, how to take care of our faith in this challenging time. According to your word, We must contend earnestly for the faith. Thank you for some illustrations that we find that it is not impossible. Those who receive 
who accept the truth and later on fall away. Lord, to counter that danger, tulungan ninyo kami sa biyaya ninyo that we must be rooted in our faith with the manifestation of the fruit sa buhay ng bawat isa sa amin. Hindi man ganun ka dami yung bunga namin, but at least there is manifestation na nagbubunga kami, Panginoon. This is trying times and faith most often tested sa mga panahon ito, Panginoon. And it is good thing also that we can showcase the power of your grace in, your, in our lives. That in one way or another, we grow faithfully. Salamat, Panginoon, sa buhay ng bawat isa. Salamat, Panginoon, sa inyong pag-udyok na kami muling itoon ang hamon, Panginoon, sa pag-iingat at pangalaga ng aming pananampalataya. I pray for each one this morning for our presence in our place and those who are watching us. You may continue to send your blessing to each one of us. And those hampered, those lives who are hampered, or who are those lives that were, that, that, that were hampered towards blessed life, I pray na kayo, Panginoon, ang patuloy na mag, magtanggal sa anumang balakid towards blessed life, Panginoon. Ano man ito na nakakahambalang tungo sa mapagpalang buhay, nalangin namin na kayo ang patuloy na mag-alis upang maging mabungahin kami sa lahat ng bahay ito. I pray for healing not just a spiritual healing, not just physical healing, but all the brokenness sa buhay namin, Panginoon. I pray that you may restore. It might be emotionally. I pray that you would continue, Lord, to, to restore the broken pieces so, so that our lives will be whole again the way you uh, restore a relationship from our separation with the Father that you stand in the midst. Because you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. And no one comes to the Father except the Lord Jesus Christ. And the same also with all our brokenness this morning. We want you, Lord, stand in the midst so that our life will be whole again. I pray for your blessing to this church and to its ministries that you may continue to touch lives that we can find each one working for the glory of the Lord. Not just a good listener of your word, but a doer of your word. I pray for those who are not around this morning. For some reasons, they are not present. I pray that you may help them cope up with what problem we, that uh, what problem that arises in their lives, and bless them that they may be able to come next gathering that we have. Continue to preserve each one of us, especially to the threat physically. Ano mang klasing karamdaman kami. Do not endanger your Christ, uh, do not endanger Lord your children especially those who are doing the essential things in this life 
I pray for our brethren who are who are recovering from illness to raise your hand, healing hands upon them. Those who are confused, give them peace. Those who are struggling, I pray for comfort. Every family that belongs to this church, I pray for continued guidance in every decision. Pagpalain ninyo ang aming bansa, we are not looking in this world the healing of our nation. What we anticipate is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ one day that He will call His children back home. But temporarily, we pray for our government that they may be able to help ease the problem morally and economically and the rest insurmountable problem ng aming bansa, Panginoon. We commit to pray each of them. Pagpalain ninyo kami sa amin pong pagsamantalang paglisan sa lugar na ito and help us to showcase our faith saan mo mang kami dadalhin, Panginoon, sa darating na linggo. Ngayon, doon sa makapag-iingat sa inyo mula sa pagkatisod at sa inyo'y makapagharap na walang kapintasan na may malaking galak sa harapan ng kanyang kaluwalhatian sa isang Diyos na ating tagapagligtas sa pamamagitan ni Iso Kristo na ating Panginoon ay suma sa kanya nawa ang kaluwalhatian, ang karangalan, ang paghahari at ang kapangyarihan sa kauna-unahang panahon ngayon at magpakailanman siya nawa. Yeah.